34th Major League Baseball season gets into full swing today, and fans never tire of talking, reading, or writing about the game. Among the new baseball books to choose from is Something to Write Home About, Great Baseball Memories in Letters to a Fan. It's a collection of handwritten thoughts about baseball from presidents, players, and celebrities. Its author is Seth Swirsky. Seth, good to see you. Nice seeing you. Now, this is actually the third in a trilogy, right? Yes, it is. I started writing these letters when my son Julian was born mm -hmm. as a way of staying in touch with the game and wanting to give him the letters when uh, he got older. Who well, I understand is a pretty good uh, uh, little leaguer. He went three for three in his first game the other day. All I'm right. To say. <laughs> and uh, before I knew it, President Bush had written back a letter in his first couple of weeks in office and mm -hmm. Paul McCartney and Martin Luther King's personal photographer and all these very interesting people that have one connection. The connection is they all have a story to tell about baseball. Why is that? Why do you think we all have a baseball story in us? I think that at some time or another we've played wiffle ball in the backyard mm -hmm. or we've heard a, you know, a story that our dads or moms have told us, something like that. As a matter of fact, the guy whose grandfather who uh, created wiffle ball mm -hmm. is in the book as well. Now you talk about mythic legends. Uh, I think there's probably nobody more mythic than Babe Ruth. Yes. And there's a connection between Babe Ruth and Herbert W. Walker Bush, George Herbert yes. Walker Bush. Well, uh, uh, George Bush I right. went to Yale, and he was the captain of the Yale baseball team, and he was there in 1948 accepting the manuscript of Babe Ruth's um, uh, biography, autobiography, right before he was going to die. And isn't it incredible that he's alive today, right. George Bush, and we have that connection to history. And that was my point in making the book, to connect mm -hmm history and to also bring us very intimate moments. The book is, is, it's an interesting combination. I mean, it's this book of letters, but it's also almost in a way uh, an art book because there's some great yes. photos in there, some great illustrations. Well, baseball is art, isn't it? It's an incredible, it's not just a sport, but it's the beauty of a, of a beautiful catch and a mm -hmm. great slide and a great pitching performance. And I also felt it's very important when people read books that it's not just thousand page novels. Right. That I tried to make things called bookumentaries. So you're actually in one page at any given time, and you could sit there for a while and really think about what was happening at mm. that moment. My favorite story in here is Gates Brown. Well, Gates Brown is a great story. You know, he's a pinch hitter, and pinch hitters are people that come in in the last inning just to get that pinch hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he always ate a hot dog uh, while he was sitting on the bench, but this coach called him in an inning early, and he had this hot dog, and he knew if he put it down, then somebody would eat it. So he put it into his pants pocket, goes up to hit, really figuring he never he didn't want to get a hit the only time he didn't want to get a hit he hits a gapper he's running around first base he slides into second and he gets up and there's mustard and ketchup and hot dog all over him and he was fined a hundred dollars at the time which was a thousand dollars the now. most expensive hot dog he ever ate. absolutely but he didn't want to give up his hot dog <laughs> never give up your hot dog that's right. that's right you'll give up a base don't give up the hot that's dog. that's exactly right you know in in here you've got not only do you have these letters but you yourself have a great deal of baseball memorabilia, including that famous ball that dribbled through Bill Buckner's legs yes. in that World Series game. Yes, it's called the Mookie Ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I also would like to say that Bill Buckner was a great, great player, and people tend to denigrate him for that bad play. But yes, I have that in my collection, as well as the uh, ball that Reggie Jackson hit for his third home run in the mm -hmm. 77 World Series. And if you notice in the book, there's also a bottle of champagne uh -huh. that the Red Sox couldn't open that day. Right. They were about to open it, but Bob Costas, in his letter, wrote that, um, no, they just couldn't get that third out. Mm -hmm. So I found that to be an interesting piece of memorabilia, the, the champagne that Boston was never able to open. Now, interestingly, you'd mentioned earlier Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. And, and you have a picture of him. Well. On the day that he won the Nobel Peace Prize in November of 1963, he was in such a good mood that he asked a man named Flip Schalke to come over to his house mm -hmm. and to take pictures of him with his son playing baseball in the backyard. He said, Flip, come to the backyard because I'm in such a good mood. I won the Nobel Peace Prize today. Just bring your cameras out. And how does he celebrate but by playing but baseball by playing with his baseball. son? And Al, that's kind of the point of the book. If you took everybody in the table of contents, as you said before, from presidents to people like Paul McCartney to guys like Peter Tork, who used to play in the Monkees and then became a high school baseball coach after the Monkees <laughs> broke up, uh -huh. if you put them which all is in, a step up, I guess, which is a step up, or there's a girl in there named Elizabeth Wrigley Field. She says, "I don't even like baseball." <laughs> But I have this name, and all I want to do is one day I want to meet a guy named Alex Fenway Park so we can share stories. You know? 
before we go, yeah. you are not only an author of, of books, of baseball books, but you're also, uh, you've hit some, written some really big pop hits. Tell us a couple of them. Well, I wrote the song Tell It to My Heart for Taylor Dane and mm -hmm. Prove Your Love, which was her second hit, and Celine Dion and Al Green, and I have a song in the new movie Two Weeks Notice, and I like writing songs and writing to baseball players. Right, so you can yeah. make different bestseller lists. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> the book is called Something to Write Home About. Seth Swirsky, thanks so very thanks much. Thanks so much, Al. All right, nice to meet you. Now here's Solidarity.